Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is your host Thomas Tyree from On The Hot Podcast. Today, this will be the Combat Series, Combat Series episode number 34 for you guys today. Of course, this episode is going to be coming out on all four of our platforms, our Instagram account, our Facebook account, our YouTube account, and our Apple Podcast account. So let's go ahead and dive into the Combat Series this week. I'll be sharing my thoughts on the WWE Royal Rumble 2024 pay-per-view. This will be my Royal Rumble pay-per-view summary. So... The 2024 Royal Rumble is officially in the books. To me, this was a pretty good overall pay-per-view. I'll be giving my letter grade in the later part of this segment, but I thought this was a pretty good pay-per-view card to kick off the calendar year 2024 for WWE. Uh, we saw the return, how the show started. We saw the return of Pat McAfee, return to the commentator test. As you guys know, Pat McAfee is one of the best sports commentator, or sports analysts in the world today. He's done a phenomenal job with ESPN, done a phenomenal job with the Pat McAfee show. And does, uh, did an incredible job this past college football season. So it's always great to get Pat McAfee back home in the WWE. And now he's actually going to be a full-time commentator when, on Monday Night Raw with Michael Cole moving forward for the for sake of the future. So it's always great to have Pat McAfee back in the world of sports entertainment. But the pay-per-view kicked off with the Women's Royal Rumble. To me, this year, the Women's Royal, the Women's Royal Rumble was truly better than the men's Royal Rumble this year. The, the women's Royal Rumble was actually outstanding, the best women's Royal Rumble that WWE has produced since the WWE Women's Royal Rumble started back in 2018. In this event, we saw the return of Naomi, who was out of the company since 2022. She was out on the scene in TNA and returned back to WWE in the Royal Rumble. We've seen the TNA Women's Champion Jordan Gracie make her WWE debut. And it was great that we uh, that Triple H actually called TNA and TNA allowed Jordan Gracie, their TNA Women's World Champion, to break onto the scene. The Women's Royal Rumble, she did a great job. R-Truth making a funny appearance was is always top-notch in these type of matches. Uh, Jay Cargill making her WWE debut. I think she's going to be an absolute star under the sports entertainment company, with the sports entertainment company. We've seen Tiffany Stratton from NXT and Roxanne Perez making a good uh, first impression on the main roster and their Royal Rumble debut. We've seen the return of Liv Morgan at entry number 30 in the Women's Royal Rumble. To me, this match had a lot of great spots. And great face-to-face -face interactions of future future matches we could see down the line that did WWE in the women's division. But Bailey winning winning the women's Royal Rumble was the right call here. Uh, we all know that it, a match with her and Io Sky for a women's world title match at WrestleMania 40 is going to be the right decision down the road for a great storyline, as great storytelling as we've seen over the last few weeks. A Bailey and Damage Control about to, are going to have a epic fallout. Leading to a main event uh, caliber match between Bailey and Io Sky for the women's world title at WrestleMania 40. I think that was the right call. And uh, that is going to be an incredible match once we get it in the next few months. So the next match on the card, we've seen Roman Reigns defeat AJ Styles, LA Knight, and Randy Orton to successfully retain his WWE Undisputed Universal Championship in a fatal four-way match. To me, this match was a good match, and that's expected when you have four caliber stars in the match. When you have Roman Reigns, an all-time great, you have AJ Styles that can honestly never have a bad match. You can honestly have a good damn match with a damn broomstick. You have LA Knight, the mega star, and then you have Randy Orton, one of the greatest to ever do it. If you're building up a wrestler from the ground up, Randy Orton is a spitting image of what a wrestler is supposed to look like in their prime and at their peak of their career. Even in Randy Orton's early 40s, the man is still knocking out of the park in his promos, his matches, you name it. The man is phenomenal. But nonetheless, we saw Roman Reigns successfully retain his title in the Fatal 4-Way match. Thanks to the help of Solo Sokoa. When it looked like Randy Orton had Roman Reigns put away after that RKO, what do we see? Every single time Roman Reigns has a title defense nowadays, the interference of the bloodline. And honestly, as great as Roman Reigns' is, title defense or uh, undisputed championship title reign has been, the Roman Reigns, I have, I have never, ever complained about this title reign. I've said it on the podcast that Roman Reigns' title reign has been historic. It's been one of the greatest title reigns in WWE history. 
But it's starting to get annoying when you have every title defense that Roman Reigns has that's very predictable. You already know the outcome. We already know nine times out of ten the bloodline is going to interfere in the championship match. So it takes away prestige and honor to the matches that Roman Reigns presents himself when he defends the title now. And in the last five title defenses, we've seen the bloodline interfere in the last five title defenses that Roman Reigns has had. Dating back to the Elimination Chamber with Sami Zayn. WrestleMania 39 against Cody Rhodes, SummerSlam with Jay Uso, Crown Jewel at LA Knight, and now at the Royal Rumble. So that's, as I, I honestly, the title defenses are really getting annoying to me. Roman Reigns retains the title. Then the next match we see in Logan Paul defeat Kevin Owens by disqualification to retain his United States Championship. I thought this was a good match between the two respective wrestlers. Expected two, and this was expected when you have two great wrestlers. Logan Paul, who has really had one of the best rookie years in WWE history. The man is an original wrestler that has never broken on the independent scene. Never had to do the indies. Never had to do anything extra to get to the top of the mountain of WWE. The man is just a natural. Natural born athlete that has the abilities to steal the show whenever his number is called. Then you have Kevin Owens, one of the greatest wrestlers in wrestling today throughout all promotions. When you have these two in the ring together, the magic was ha magic is uh, is automatically set to happen. But I believe that this was the beginning of the rivalry. A lot of people might not like the finish, but I I'm not complaining about the finish. How many times have we seen a referee get being becoming fragile and being knocked out off a, of a super kick? out of the ring for five minutes or not noticing what the hell is going on this is actually a, a nice touch to something different as you guys know that watched the event kevin owens hit logan paul with the brass knuckles and as the referee was counting the three count he saw the brass knuckles on kevin owens's hand called for the disqualification call and i'm not mad at that decision i think this was a great booking strategy because there's a lot left that these two wrestlers have to offer and i think they could give us a rematch for the united states championship as early as the elimination chamber pay-per-view event in february so i'm not mad about this i'm gonna be excited when the two wrestlers run this back uh, i thought that was a great match for things to come then the final match on the card we had the men's royal rumble match to me, the men's Royal Rumble match was good, but I didn't think it was as good and spectacular as the women's Royal Rumble match. It was a good way to kick off the Royal Rumble with Jay Uso drawing number one and his twin brother Jimmy Uso drawing number two. The face-to-face -face interaction screams to me that there needs to be a WrestleMania match between the two twin brothers and Jimmy and Jay the Usos. But in this match, we also seen the return of Andrade El Idolo. He's back in the company. We see the return of Omos and Ricochet. We've seen strong, strong showings from the new, from the new guys that will be uh, cornerstones in the WWE for years to come. The NXT guys, of Carmelo Hayes and Braun Bit a Breaker in this match. Pat McAfee was handed a spot in this match, but I do believe it, it was a waste of an opportunity for another NXT guy like Trick Williams, who could have used the boost and being a part of the Men's Royal Rumble match. Our truth with the hot tag, the first ever hot tag in Men's Royal Rumble history. Being on the apron, waiting for a tag, the crowd absolutely popped when that happened. Several storylines were in it, happened and intertwined during the Royal Rumble. Rumble, but I honestly do not mind Cody Rhodes winning the Royal Rumble back-to-back -back years. He's the first wrestler to do it in 26 years since Stone Cold Steve Austin did it years ago. So there's no problem with that. I think that silences the critics that Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns will be happening instead of The Rock and, Co and Roman Reigns this year at WrestleMania. I don't have a problem with it. We all know that Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns is the big marquee match that a lot of wrestling fans wanted at WrestleMania 40 from a WrestleMania 39 rematch. So I'm not complaining. And honestly, with the news of CM Punk tearing his tricep in the Royal Rumble match, this was obviously the best choice to have Cody Rhodes win the Royal Rumble over CM Punk. Now, obviously, nobody knew this was going to happen. But can you imagine having a Royal Rumble winner? And then days later, the Royal Rumble winner having to sacrifice their title opportunity that they earned in the men's Royal Rumble match, having to throw it away to another superstar. So I'll be getting into that later on in the episode. Uh, that the, the 2024 Royal Rumble is in the books. The letter grade I get this event is a B plus. I agree with all the booking decisions in the Royal Rumble. I like the fact that Bailey was the women's Royal Rumble winner. I like the fact that 
Roman Reigns successfully retained his title in a fatal four-way match against LA Knight, AJ Styles, and Randy Orton. I like that Logan Paul and Kevin Owens, that unique finish, that, that disqualification finish that will set us up for a rematch potentially at Elimination Chamber for the United States Championship. And I don't mind seeing Cody Rhodes win the Royal Rumble again, back-to-back -back years. But some people had their expectations way too high for this pay-per-view event. People wanted uh, out-of-the-box home run hits like guy, uh, free agents coming to the Royal Rumble, guys like MJF, Sasha Banks returning to the company, or uh, Okada coming to the WWE. People just had their hopes way too high for this Royal Rumble event. You can't sign all these guys all and women all at once. Things have to uh, deteriorate in the world of wrestling. But people may complain about Royal uh, Cody Rhodes going back-to-back, -back, uh, Royal Rumble winner, uh, being a back-to-back -back Royal Rumble winner. I see nothing wrong with this. Like I just said, it really sells the fact that we will get the rematch in the main event of WrestleMania 40 Night 2 between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE title. But those are my thoughts on the Royal Rumble 2024 pay-per-view event.